Okay, so what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how do we determine um, what all of our solutions are being and why do we add that you know plus 2 pi or plus n and all that kind of different stuff. So let's take a look at the cosine of x equals the square root of 2 over 2. Now, when we look at the interval, a lot of times what we like to do is take a look at our unit circle and determine what values or what angle when we take the cosine of x, that's going to equal the square root of 2 over 2. And so we know that this value, cosine, is going to equal the square root of 2 over 2 at my angle of pi over 4 and at the angle of 7 pi over 4, where this angle is square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. And this point is square root of 2 over 2 comma negative square root of 2 over 2. OK, now that's on the interval of 0 to 2 pi. And let's take a look at what would actually the graph of cosine would look like. And so we can really make an understanding of why it's going to be only those two values on an interval of 0 to 2 pi. So we know the cosine goes up to positive 1 and down to negative 1. And 1, 2, 3, 4 completes one whole circle at at 2 pi. So it goes up, down, come back, up, and up. Now, that is at an interval of 0 to 2 pi, which we were able to learn how to graph by using our unit circle. But that is only one revolution. Now remember, the sine graph continues on and on and on and on, and then it goes in the negative direction, right? So it's not just the interval of 0 and 2 pi. So if I ask you to find all the solutions, not just the solutions on 0 to 2 pi, but I want you to find all of the solutions. We need to look at the distance between each and every solution. So let's look at the first case when um, our cosine of x equals the square root of 2 over 2. We say that that first value is x equals pi over 4, where pi over 4 would be this case right here. So it's going to be, you know, my graph is not very good. But let's say it's going to be at that point right there. So because this is pi halves, then this is pi over 4. So that points at pi over 4. Then the next solution we said was at 7 pi over 4. And if you look at, we could say 7 pi over 4 is going to be right here. And there's your next solution. Now, the distance between these two solutions is not 2 pi. So we got a little issue here. But what I notice is the next answer, because here's going to be my um, answer. So if here's 1, here's the value of square root of 2 over 2. So the next answer is right there. Then there's a solution there and a solution there. We have a negative solution here, here, here. And what you notice is this graph is going to have infinite many solutions when cosine of x equals square root of 2 over 2. So if I ask you to find all the solutions, what we want to do is find the solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi, which we found. The only solutions between 0 and 2 pi, we use the unit circle because it's a little bit more easier than using the graph to understand that the only two solutions between 0 and 2 pi are pi force and 7 pi over 4. However, to get to the next solution, right, you can see that this distance from this solution to this solution is also 2 pi. And from this solution to this solution is also 2 pi. And what happens if I keep on repeating 2 pi, I'm going to continue getting my new solutions. So that's why I'm going to add 2 pi and plus 2 pi. But if we just add 2 pi once, yeah, we get this solution. But what about the solution over here? We got to add 2 pi again. So that's why we multiply it by a variable. And sometimes, in some of my videos, I used n or r. And it doesn't really matter what your variable is. But you need to understand we need to add 2 pi n in this case to be able to rectify all or to show all of the different solutions. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you find all of the solutions and represent it by adding um, 2 pi n. Thanks.